Today we're at Port Macquarie Zoo, Koala and Wildlife Park in Port Macquarie. It's just a 10 minute drive from Port Macquarie, super easy to get to. Again, it's a beautiful hot day. We're going to meet Mark, who's one of the owners here, and check out all that there is on offer in this amazing place. Let's go and have a look. G'day, Mark. Hey. G'day. How are you going? Good, good. How are you? Very good, thank you. Who have we got here then? Well, these are um, some of our wallaby collection, um, yep. the redneck wallaby that we have in here in our walkthrough enclosure. Um, very popular spot for the families to come I can imagine. visit. The kids love to, to interact. Fantastic. Certainly liking the little treat there you're giving, giving this Absolutely, one. Absolutely, yeah. They're so very used to that. Is this one a female or a male? Uh, a little male. Little male. Oh, well, not so little. He's not a good, so good sized male. Yep. And uh, one of our breeding boys. Fantastic. And how many, um, how many animals have you got in the whole park here? Well, they're, they're hundreds. Obviously, yep. with our bird collection, you sort yep. of start going down into um, in, in nutting down into all of those but um, yeah so lots of, for people to see and do. Yeah amazing and when um, I guess as you said this is one of the real highlights when people do come to the park um, what are the other the major things that people are always straight to go for as soon as they get through the doors? Um, do you know they're all different it's quite funny that um, and especially when we're talking international visitors it can be um, a certain nationality has a preference to koalas others yep. to wombats and so on and so forth. So, um, and our local visitors, they like to see the exotic animals. So yep. definitely our snow leopard is a, a top of the priority and, um, and our big croc shrek. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> and how, and you've been, you've obviously owned the business now. How long have you had the business here? Yeah, we bought it um, almost 18 years ago now. Yep. And um, we've gone through a lot of transformation. It was just a small wildlife park when we bought it. Yeah. And um, and we've transformed it into what it is today. Amazing. So, how much do you, would you say it's grown in that time over? Uh, yeah. Oh wow! Um, probably a big question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big question. Yeah, um, five hundred times, six hundred times more than it was. Yeah. So definitely, um, it's a whole different um, feel, different look to the to the facility. Yeah. And um, and yeah, we're a zoo now rather than just a wildlife park. Yeah, interesting. And I know obviously conservation plays a massive part in everything you do here in terms of education and that, that kind of thing. What, what, what are some of the, again, the key programs that you run here to, to inspire people, I guess, around Yeah, nature? well, we do, um, we do quite a bit. Um, everything from formal education. So we have, um, at any one time when visitors come to visit, they'll often see TAFE students uh, walking around and uh, th those guys are being trained within the zoo here and they yep. get their formal training here. Yep. Um, my son actually does the teaching in the classroom at the TAFE so that's a big big part yep. but just the, the regular visitor to the zoo can expect um, conservation through education yep. which is our motto and so learning about the animals that we have here yep. and um, and the plight of them in the wild so yeah they, they go away with a little bit of knowledge and yep. understanding of what's required to look after them in the wild. Yeah fantastic and I know obviously with the COVID world we live in these days and ordinarily you have a lot of zoo talks. How have you sort of adapted to, to still being able to educate people on that level? And yeah, well, I mean, I'm, we're really hoping that we can get back to, um, to that side of things because it was a very big part of what we do. Mm. And um, at least every half an hour or more, there was presentations that people could go and watch the keepers interacting with the animals yeah. um, and, and learn about them, which is most important. Now at the moment, because um, of the social gathering implications of those sorts of things, uh, what we've done is we've put a QR code system through the zoo. So we've filmed a lot of keeper talks and even talks that we've never done before. And, um, and people can now click on the QR code, uh, which most people are pretty savvy with these days. Yep. And watch the presentation at their leisure on their phone while they're looking at the animals. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. And School holidays and uh, I guess outside of school holidays, just, you know, everyone's travelling a lot more domestically now. Have you seen a big surge in people, more people coming from around Australia? To, yeah, to we, we have certainly um, seen a growth in that and, and, and also um, our local visit, visitation has increased as well, yeah, which is wonderful. great. So um, we're, we're told these days, get out and support local business and um, most people are trying to do that and that includes uh, the tourism trade. Yep. And in particular, the zoos and wildlife parks can really do with um, as many visitors as they can handle mm. uh, based on the fact that, you know, if you close a business down for a period of time, mm. there's not a lot of outlay that you have to worry about. But uh, when you've got all these animals to look, 
look after. There's a lot of feed bills and, and that sort of thing that, that uh, we needed to. So support from, yeah. from everyone is, is well appreciated. Of course, yeah. Now next up I think we're going to go and see one of my personal highlights of the park and that's the koala area. Yep. So uh, why don't we go and take a walk down there and have a look. Fantastic, Brilliant. let's go. Right. Oh, inside. Shh. I feel like we should be very quiet. <laughs> All I can see is sleeping Everyone's koalas. sleeping. Everyone's sleeping. This is normal for them. So, <laughs> this is yeah. totally normal. Normal for them. Yep. How many hours a day would these guys sleep on average? Um, they sleep about 16, 18 hours a day. They're all a little bit different. Yep. Um, hey buddy. Oh, look at this guy. Um, so yeah, so they're all um, a little bit different, but around that sort of time frame. Yeah, yep. depending on the need for mobility and moving around, whether they're chasing another feed supply or whatever. Uh, and active at night time, is having a good sleep. Yeah, their here. most active having period is sunset to midnight. Yep. Um, and um, after then they sleep as much through the night then as they do through the day. <laughs> so they really do sleep a yeah, lot? Yeah, they do. It's true what they say, isn't it, buddy? Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's been a long day already. Better go back to sleep. Oh. We'll come and have a look at these little fellas over absolutely. here. Absolutely. Two more fast asleep over here. Yeah. So we're in the breeding area here, Mark, is that right? So we, that's correct, yeah. yeah so we, um, we have a very good breeding program and we have done for many years yep. and uh, very proud of that. Yep. And uh, yeah, obviously with all the little joeys you can see here today, there's five of them uh, kicking around. And uh, one of our boys making some noise over there. <laughs> we're moving into breeding season again now, so that's what the noise is about. It starts to get very noisy in it here. It does, yeah, yeah. And how old will this little guy be? Um, these little guys are all around 12 months of age. So 12 months already? Yeah, in, okay. Yeah, yep. as you look through the, the facility. Yep. Um, this mum obviously, she's babysitting one at the moment, so one of the other mums is having a little bit of a break okay. and a breather, yep. And, yep. and her little baby is being looked after by, uh, by someone else. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And yeah. how long would she generally look after her for? Do you... Yeah. 12 to 18 months again. Oh, again, um, okay, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah um, not that long. Yeah, yeah. so. I was thinking more a few hours, you know, while the mum went oh, off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, sorry. I, yeah, um, it is only that time okay. as a babysitter, correct? Yep. yep. Um, but obviously the mum's going to have um, had the little baby for that 12 to 18 month period. So, right. yep. um, somewhere in that time frame, they, they start to get a bit adventurous and move off. Yep. And hence, this is why this one's decided to go and sit with another mum. Ah. And her mum's getting a bit of a rest time, so yep. it might only be for um, you know an hour or so. Oh, that's but really, um, yep. yeah, just like humans. Yeah, that's right. We <laughs> just we just need that little time away, just some some downtime ourselves. Absolutely. And then we come back, the battery's charged and ready to eat some more gum leaves. Ready to eat some more gum leaves. <laughs> well, there's not a lot of goodness in those eucalyptus leaves. Is that between, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why they don't um, they don't do a lot of moving. Uh, okay. Uh, between 50 and 62 percent of the leaf is moisture. Mm. Um, so there's only a small amount um, of leaf that um, has any goodness in it yep. to sustain them uh, when they're moving around and that sort of thing. So we do have to be very careful through breeding season right? because um, weight loss and that sort of thing for of a course. male in particular yep. um, yeah, it can be an issue. Yeah, okay. So it's always not going to fall out and they're having a bit of a move around. Yep. Looks like the babysitting could be over for the ba now. Yeah, babysitting could be over for now. I've got two in I didn't see the little one at the back. Yes, yep. yep. <laughs> She's wondering where mum's toddled it, off to. It's very easy to see why everybody loves koalas so absolutely, much, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they're how very can special. You not? Yeah. They're absolutely beautiful. And in many ways it feels like they've become the Port Macquarie talisman of Port Macquarie. They right? have, and they should be too. We, um, we are one of the koala capitals of Australia, and um, we have uh, a very strong, genetic strong colony mm. of koalas here. And although the bushfires have taken a toll on with some of them, yep. um, I think there's a sufficient enough evidence now to show us that there's a good population still here. Mm. And with the right plan in place, uh, yep. we should recover from this. Um, probably not as quick as I'd like to, but um, yep. we should recover from this okay if we if we do the right thing. No, well, that's very good news for yeah. sure. Yeah. And clearly a massive draw card for, for everyone that comes here. This must Absolutely. be, uh, surely well, it's this a, must be the top, the top one of all. For yeah, I, I think so. And yeah. I'm a little bit passionate to the koalas. And, um, and it does give us the opportunity to talk to our customers about the plight of the koalas and the bushfires recently and, yeah. and what we need to do to protect them um, and look after them. Fantastic.
Well, it's been an absolute privilege to be in here with these little guys and get, get relatively close up and just, yeah, observe their behaviour. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, they're very special. It's making me feel sleepy as well, I think. I feel like joining <laughs> them in the tree for a nap. Well, there we go. <laughs> that might be on a little later on. Might be on. on a little later on, absolutely. Mm. All right. Wonderful. OK, well, I think we're going to trek on to our next spot, which I believe could be having a look at some crocodiles. I mean, oh, well, there we crocodile. go. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. From one extreme to another. All right, Mark, well, we've gone from very sleepy koalas to someone who is still quite sleepy, but has definitely got a far bigger bite. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and who have we got over here? Uh, this is our resident crocodile, Shrek. Yeah. Um, he's a saltwater or estuarine crocodile, and he's been with us for quite a few years now, and he's a, an amazing animal. Um, quite gentle, if you can believe that. Right. But, um, yeah, our keepers go in every day and feed him, yep. and uh, he's a beautiful animal. Oh, yeah, he looks magnificent. I'm sure he's become quite a legend in the park as well, no doubt. He has, and um, he's got quite a, a social following, um, in particular with young boys. They're, okay. they're very, very keen to, uh, <laughs> to come in and see Shrek uh, yep. on, on every visit to the zoo. And uh, we have yearly pass holders that visit on a regular basis, and, uh, yep. and they in particular, yeah, they have their particular animal that is their favourite that they like to come and spend time so he's with. He's a real draw card for the park. He, he absolutely is, yes. Yeah, amazing. You always wonder, don't you, because they always, there's that old age-old saying of the crocodile always sees you before you see them and you just see the eyes up there. And Absolutely, and, and you can watch in here um, when Shrek, uh, Shrek comes up from the bottom of the pond, yep. um, when he breaks water, quite often no ripples. It's the most amazing thing to watch. For such and a big... Absolutely, for such a big animal. Almost five metres, so he's a big crocodile. Wow, that is a very, very big fish. And tell, mm. tell me about the boat over here as well. This looks like someone got uh, someone had a bit of a... Yeah, <laughs> we... <laughs> um, we like theming the enclosures gives people a bit of an idea of um, because people don't like to read too much uh, these days and yep. um, so if you can give them a bit of a feel that you know they're in the habitat of the animal mm. and um, the Margaret River you'd often see a titty on the bank and yep. that sort of thing and um, renowned for fishing spots and whatnot so it's got the esky in the back and the boat was ready <laughs> to go but um, this one is Ship Shrek. Ship Shrek. Ship Shrek. Okay, yep. Ship Shrek. Ship Shrek. Brilliant. So we've got Shrek the crocodile and Ship Shrek. Yeah. And, I, and I'm guessing no one's been game enough to go and uh, get the boat out again. Yeah, we'll give it a no, touch up. No, that's right. Or... Yeah, no, we, we yeah. talked about um, <laughs> we talked about some touch up and putting the name on the side of the boat. Yep. And um, yeah, we haven't had anyone game enough to lean over to do that <laughs> just yet. Amazing. So. I guess for anyone coming to visit the park, how long would you sort of recommend people come for? Obviously, there's a lot to see. There is. So it's a yeah. real full day experience. It, it can be, yeah. It's, it's important that people understand that they can spend an hour or spend all day yep. um, entirely up to themselves. And because we do get visitors that are on their way through um, yep. traveling from Sydney to Brisbane. Of course, and, yeah. And uh, they just need a, a, a break for an hour. Yep. And uh, what better place to do it than here? Stretch the legs, yep. um, have something to eat, and, um, and enjoy these uh, wonderful wildlife. Yeah, amazing. Uh, and I guess for the kids, what sort, you know, obviously kids love, will love everything anyway, but are there specific things that you do for the kids here? Do you know, it's really funny because a lot of people think generically that zoos are all about children. Um, our demographic is yep. from grandma and granddad right down to newborn babies. So, um, so it's right across the spectrum yep. and everyone can take things away from, mm. from us here at the zoo. Yep. Um, little learning um, pieces of information that they've learned about different animals and things like that, which is so, so important. Yep. So um, we do all sorts of things. Um, under normal circumstances, we'd have a lot of animals out for people to touch and pat and, course, um, and get yep. up close to. And um, hopefully very soon we'll be able to get back to all of that. Yep. So yeah, so there's lots for everyone. Yeah, fantastic. And Port Macquarie just seems like it's absolutely thriving. Yep. So it seems like there's so much going on here. And of course, everything feels so close as well. It's beautiful. Um, you know, we've got the hinterland, yep. um, we've got the beaches uh, to the east and um, we're smack in the middle, which is a wonderful place to be. But um, depending on what your palate is and what you decide you want to do for the day, will determine which way you head, yeah. uh, north, south, east or west. So um, we moved from the south coast and the temperate climate up here is, is an absolute bonus. Yeah. Um, having the airport when that's back up and running is, is another big bonus for Port Macquarie. Yeah. Uh, we can jump on a plane and be down in Sydney in 55 minutes or so. Yeah. And likewise, people from Sydney can pop up and, um, and just spend a day or the weekend. So yeah. nice, easy, comfortable, relaxing vacation. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you what you, what you loved about living in Port Macquarie. You were seeing a long-time resident now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the last 18 years, um, I, 
it's just such a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, we're so very privileged that um, we get to enjoy this beautiful place day in, day out. Mm. Um, probably don't get as much time to enjoy outside of the zoo, but um, this is my passion. This is what we love. Yeah. Um, I, I love the customers going away with taking something away from what we're doing here and, and learning about the passion that we have for our wildlife. and. Um, that's really important to me. So being in here is pretty special. Yeah, it's wonderful. And great to hear that it's a family-run business as well. I know that makes a huge difference to the passion that comes out through your f uh, family members and no doubt generations to come as well. Yes, that's absolutely true. And that's very common comment from the customers is, um, you know, that it is a, that family business feeling is here, right here. Mm. And as people walk around, they, they feel like they're part of our family. Yeah, well, you certainly made me feel like part of your family today, Mark. So thank, thank you, you so much for showing me around. You are more and, than welcome, uh, thank you. Next time I'll bring my own family and uh, come and meet you all, at, you know, and hopefully Shrek as well. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Beautiful. He's having a look at us now. He is. I think he heard what we were saying. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, well, he's, he's looking to see if we've got any food oh, for Oh, I him. see, yeah. yeah.